Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the XL Club and welcome to another XL video. Today I have something a little bit different for you. Today I have a challenge to give to you. Now this challenge comes from a spreadsheet that was sent to me by my brother during the week with a problem that he was trying to solve. And as there's so many different ways of doing things in Excel, I thought I would put that out there for everybody else to have a go and see what sort of solutions they can come up with. Now the solution I've come up with, you can watch now in a couple of minutes, but if you want to take part in the challenge, you can hop over to my website. You'll find a link below this video and you'll find this workbook on the website so you can download and you can also come up with a solution or even practice the solution that I am going to provide. I'm really excited to see the other solutions that are put forward for this data challenge. But before we get stuck in and I show you the actual problem and the solution that I've come up with, I do hope that you will subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications button again so you don't miss any more of my videos. I hope that you'll also give this video a big thumbs up. So if you're ready, we will hop over to this spreadsheet now and we will have a look at the actual problem. Okay, so this workbook contains three worksheets. It contains a worksheet called clients, which basically lists some clients um, ID and then their details. It includes a sheet called the employee ch charge out and it also includes a sheet called the time sheet. Now the charge out sheet contains a column for the employee, a to date and a from date. It then has a code. Now this code relates to the client and there's a lookup that then pulls in the client based on the client sheet. After this then, this is going to be a record of the bill out time. So the rate that these particular employees are going to be billed out to at certain jobs. So there's a standard rate, a time and a half and a double time rate, a time two rate. Now, each employee can be on each job multiple times and have multiple rates um, for multiple dates. So what we need to be able to do is in our timesheet, what will happen is the timesheet will be filled out based on the employee's name, the date, it'll then put in the code, which will look up the name, the number of hours, and then the class. And this will be all entered in. What we want then to do is to be able to calculate the actual rate. So we want to know if standard is in here for the standard rate to be pulled in, if the um, rate is one and a half for the one and a half, you can see 1.5 and if it's two for the two rate to be pulled in. This will then give us our charge out, which will basically sum all of the hours and it should multiply it by the actual hour numbers as well. And that will give you the actual charge out. Now, if you want to just the charge out rate, we wouldn't multiply by the hours, which the charge out rate wasn't given as part of the problem. So the problem here is that we need to match quite a lot of columns. We need to match the employee name with our charge out table. We then need to also match our job code with our charge out table because an employee can have two job codes. We see Lisa here has job code uh, 003 and 002. So we need to match both of these. Now they could have the same job code twice with different dates for different rates. So we also need to be able to select in between the rates. And what we want to then return is in the standard column, we want to return the matching value for the standard in the time and a half column, the matching value for the time and a half. And in the double time column, we want to match the double time amount, but only when these amounts, when the class is, what the particular class has been defined. Now for more details on this actual problem, do hop over to the website. As I said, you'll find a link below, but if you're ready now, I'm going to show you the solution that I came up with to solve this problem. So I know that my brother's using Excel 365 and he has these new dynamic array functions and he has the filter function. 
So I've chosen to come up with a solution based on the filter function. Now the filter function will allow you to filter a table or an array of data based on criteria that you want to keep within the particular range. So really what I'm saying here is we want to go over and we want to filter our employee charge out standard column where the employee name matches, where the code matches and where the date is in between these particular dates here. So we're doing a kind of lookup with a, a filter and we're returning this standard column. So let's go back into our timesheet and let's start creating our filter function. So we will say filter. So filter is an array, a range or an array. So the array that we want to filter is going to be our standard. So I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to press F4 to lock in all of these cells. So that's the array that we want to filter. Now, the next thing that the filter function asks is, what is it that you want to include in this filter? Not is it what you want to exclude, what is it that you want to include? Well, we want to make sure that the names match. So we can select our names and you need to make sure that the array size that we selected is the same as the return array. So we want to select our names. Now I'm going to lock in that value and I want to say it is equal to, and on our timesheet, our employee name. So we want to keep that. If it's equal, we want to keep that. So that's going to filter our charge out table to any employees that are Dylan. Now I'm going to wrap that portion in a bracket because when you're using the filter function and you need to use and criteria. The and symbol that you would usually use in Excel doesn't tend to work. So you need to use the multiply the ampersand symbol. So this is used in arrays. And if you understand array functions and what's working behind the scenes, you'll have a load of zeros and ones for this answer. You're going to multiply these by zeros and ones too, where zero will give a false and one will give a true to come up with the answer that you need. So our next criteria is that we want to check that our codes match. So again, in our brackets, if we go to our employee sheet and we select all of our codes, and I'm gonna lock these values in, and we want this to be equal to the code on our sheet. So that's two of the criteria. So now we want to make sure our dates are within range as well. So we're given one date on this sheet. So in our brackets, we want to make sure our date on our timesheet is greater than or equal to, and if we go to our employee sheet and fill this down, F4 to lock it in. So it's greater than or equal to our from date. And we also want to make sure our date is less than or equal to are two dates and I'm going to put that in a bracket as well. So now we can close the bracket on the filter function. I'm going to hit enter now and we can see that the standard rate has been pulled in here for us. But what I didn't do is lock these last values in here. So I need to just go back and lock them in. So now if we fill this down, we should be able to get all of the standard rates. However, we don't want a standard rate when T1 is in here. We want the T1 rate. So we need to now combine this with an if statement. So I'm going to go back in here and I am going to edit our formula and we're going to say if. And our logical test is basically going to say if our class is equal to standard, then we want our filter function Otherwise, we want blank and we can close a bracket and then we can fill this value down. So now when we have a T1.5, nothing comes in. If we test it with a T2, we can also see nothing comes in. So now what we need to do is we need to get the rate 1 and the rate 2. So I'm going to take our formula that we have here 
and I'm going to copy our formula and I'm going to copy it in to rate and into both of these and I'm just going to amend some parts of this formula first of all our if statement here is going to be if this says t1.5 so we can change that there and this one here is going to be t1 point or t2 we also need to change the array that the filter is working on in standard the array the filter array which is this first part here references to our standard column we need to change that now for each of these so we're referencing to our t1s and our t2s instead so let's go in here and i'm going to just delete this first part of the filter function and i'm going to go back into our charge out rate and i'm going to select the g5 to g9 and hit enter and our t2 rate is going to be h so we can change it in here just to the h and now we can fill these values down and we see a value has been pulled in here for 45 and for 45 let's change one of these to t2 it's 68 now let's test this now and see if the values that we have pulled in are correct so we have a rate of 62 for time, double time on the 15th of um, September for Amber. So let's go in here. We have Amber the 15th of September will fall in here. T2 is 68. And that is a match. Now we should also convert all of this into a table. So I'm going to convert all of this into a table by pressing Control and T. And then I am going to go into my table design and I'm going to remove the filter buttons from the table design. And I'm going to name the table timesheet. And I'm going to go into our employee charge out table too. And I am also going to turn this one into a table. And I'm going to add a new row to this table. So I am going to say Lisa again. I am going to say from the 1st of the 10th, 2020 to the 15th of the 11th, 2020. I'm going to say GBS001. I'm going to say one, two, three, very low numbers so we can easily see them. Now, if we go down into our timesheet, let us add a new row so i'm going to say lisa i am going to say what dates that i put in there first of the tent i'm going to put in the second of the tent i'm going to put in gbs 001 i'm going to put in five hours standard time works perfect it's pulled in the one for us let me change that to t1 let me change that to T2. Now let me see if I put in a date that is out of range, we should get a some sort of an error if we don't have a match. So let me put in the first of the ninth. So we get a calculation error because there, there is nothing in here for the first of the ninth. Now we can put wrap our formula with an is error or if error, and with the if error, we can say no rate applicable or something like that to replace that actual error. But let's just test to see if this works. This is GBS 001. Lisa is with GBS 002. So let's change it. And we can see that during that time period, they there is some rates in there. Let me put in GBS 001. Again, we have a calculation, 003, it was one we tested earlier on, 003 pulls in the right amount. But if we were to change the name, we can see Nathan was actually also on the same job, but within that particular date and has an amount. So there you have it. That's how I solved this problem for my brother using the filter function. 
Now, as I said, there's so many different ways you can do things in Excel. And I really hope that some of you post the solutions that you come up with, because I'm dying to see the other ways that people are doing things. It's just with Excel, there's so much variety. There's so many different functions and formulas and ways to do things. So I do hope that you will take part in the challenge. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.